Glória a Jesus. Aleluia. My beloved brethren, I greet every one of the peace of the Lord. I also remind those that are connected with us on the YouTube channel, those that are listening to us, peace of the Lord to everyone. I will stand up, everyone that can. I invite the church and the brethren to read in the Gospel of John, John 5. John chapter 5. We're going to read verse from verse 1 to verse 9. Is the cure of a, of a cripple from Bethesda. Let us read. Thank you. No problem at all. Everything is fine. Let us let us read all together what the brothers are providing a new microphone. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is in Jerusalem, by this sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then wherever steeped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now certain man was there who had an inf infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was Saturday, Sabbath. Sabbath. Amen. The church may be seated and may God bless the word has been read. There was a feast in Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem has been uh, on the news recently. The American president under a lot of controversy established there. The American embassy in Jerusalem and the Jews are very happy with the American president because of this. Because Jerusalem as capital and recognizing something the Bible has already spoke about for a long time. Jerusalem is a word in Hebrew that says as a meaning this terminology Shalom Yerushalayim in Hebrew, Yerushalayim, this end means peace, Shalom means peace, the whole word means city of men of peace, in a more literal translation, inhabit in you peace, it's interesting right, so it's a place that speaks so much about peace, but it always is under war, because uh, disputes but Jerusalem has a prophetic meaning for us. Now, forgetting the Jews, the Arabs, the religion, and all this dispute. Now, our topic here is another. Specifically, Jerusalem points out to a, one prophecy. 
when the Bible speaks of, of Jerusalem, we're always, we're always reminded of the heavenly Jerusalem, which is the eternal life that is awaiting for us. So there is a hope. When we speak about the seed of peace in habit, in you, peace is not only for this life. The desire of the Lord is that we are able to achieve and that we are able to find the true peace in, peace in Jesus so that we can live eternally in peace with God. So Jerusalem here speaks of a place of blessings, a place of peace. And what we want to say to you who entered here, whether you are a member of the church or a new Christian or even one that is not a Christian yet, God has a blessing of peace to your heart. You who entered, you entered here in a little piece of Jerusalem, in a place where God is present, God inhabits this place. But now, it is interesting that Jesus entered in, into the city and there was a great feast. The feast was probably the feast of the tabernacles, a feast where they assembled the, the tents. They spent days remembering the peregrination of the Jewish people in the desert. The Bible is not, does not make it clear, but the, the scholars say that it's probably this feast. And this feast, it, you know, the whole people in Israel went to the capital to set up the tents, and it's a feast of the tents. In Israel, on the days of feast, Jerusalem in the days of feast is a very beautiful place. The people, they dress up with the best clothing. It's a joy. Whole families go to the temple. Today, there is no temple anymore. Today, the only thing that's left is the wall, the weeping wall, where people fold a little paper with their prayers and put on the gaps of the wall. It's very interesting. But I imagine the day of feast in the temple, can imagine the families coming from different places of Israel arriving there for this great feast. What is the place you are going to go? You are going to go to the place of feast, to the temple. But Jesus, who is our shepherd, who is our Lord, he is the one who takes care of our lives and zeals for his flock. He didn't go to the temple. He entered through the gate of the sheep. The, the Bible says that. He went to a place. He went to a place called the Pool of Bethesda. The word Bethesda in Hebrew means House of Mercy. Uh, house of Grace in Aramaic. But it's the same thing. You see many hospitals, there are, they have this name. Be they put it like a saint, Saint Bethesda. Because it's the place where they cure the, the sick. It's making a reference to this Bethesda. There's even a hospital called Bethesda. I don't know if there's a hospital here in Florida, but I heard, I, I've seen a hospital with this name. It means a place of the sick, but a place where there will be healing for the sick. It's referring to this text. Bethesda, house of mercy. Jesus does not go, does not go to the temple. He goes through the gate of the sheep and is going to take care of a single man in the midst of that great crowd. The Bible does not exaggerate anything. The Bible is perfect. The Bible has no mistakes. So. When the Bible speaks of a crowd, it's a big crowd. But when the Bible speaks of a great multitude, it was a great multitude. There should be like a sick. There are sick hanging from the, from the lamps. And the Bible qualified what type of sick they were there. It was not just any kind of sickness. Which one were they? The blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. In other words, there were people that could not go about without the help of others. And the detail was that, I don't know if there was a tradition or if it really happened. The Bible doesn't make it very clear. But they were waiting for the moving of the waters. And an angel would every now and then sh appear there and move the water and whoever went down first would be cured. 
Imagine a great crowd. Take it out of the pocket. I think the, because the, the microphone is not working. Everybody tells me to do this and never obey. There's a disobedient pastor is, is a problem. I think it's going to work out better now. It's fine now. Where did I stop? <laughs> About the disobedient pastor. The great multitude, right? I just remembered. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good that everybody's paying attention. That's great. Even the children. Amen. So, then my brother, the angel, we don't know, but the, de the detail is that the angel would stir the waters and whoever came first, but you can imagine, the blind, the blind heard the voice, the, the sound of the waters, somebody would have, would have been there. The, par the paralyzed, in order for the, the paralyzed to get ready to get up, so the lame is the same thing. So, how interesting the Bible has some certain details that call our attention. If we take this picture, this scenery, and apply into our, our spiritual life, man without God, man without God, we can say that man is exactly on this, uh, this region. Spiritually, how man is without God, blind, spiritually speaking, lame and, and paralyzed, man cannot move around spiritually if no, nobody helps him. And what happens usually is this, oh, somebody tells you there is a blessing on that place oh, and I will take you there. And then they take him there and when he arrives there, somebody has already gone ahead of him and has already received the blessing. And what happens? And he goes back disappointed. You know why? Because he trusts in man. He trusts on what can be even something that is not real. And man without God, my brethren, man doesn't have an objective. And I see this man here. When Jesus approached him, the Bible says that Jesus knew this man. And we we'll apply this to us tonight. Jesus knows our lives. Jesus knows your affliction. If you are spiritually blind, if you are being carried around back and forth by other people and you are being disappointed because the blessing never comes, Jesus knows. The book of Revelation that we, if we have studied in every letter seven times, there is this expression, I know, it's Jesus saying, I know, I know, I know, seven times. And when you entered here, Jesus looked at you and he's, he told, I know this man, I know this youth, I know this child, I know this man, I know this woman. God knows us in detail. 38 years this man was sick. Jesus approached to him and asked a question that you can imagine. What kind of obvious question? Going to a place of the sick and it's the same as going to a hospital and a waiting room and asking, who wants to be healed? Of course, everybody will answer yes. But Jesus didn't go around the crowd and make a big appeal or a, a, he didn't advertise a man that heals. No, none of it. Because, you know, my brethren, salvation is not healing. The objective of healing, the objective of the, the miracle, and I want to say to the brethren that Pastor Sabato, Pastor Ronildo and I, we here, we believe in miracles. We believe in healing. God heals us many times. And from anything you can imagine, I, we know that uh, Lord, the Lord resurrected Lazarus and He resurrects the dead. We believe in this. But cure and resurrection is not an, an end in itself. It cannot stop on the cure. 
has to have the next step, which is the greatest blessing, which is the greatest miracle that God can do, which is salvation. So today, on that day, the Lord approached this man and asked a question because it was his necessity. And Jesus, and today, he wants to take, he be, can begin to take care of you, whatever is your need, may it be a cure or a deliverance, it may be a job that you need, or even something material, just to show you that He knows your necessity. And He will operate on this need. Look what, look this, my brethren. You want to be healed? What would be the first answer? Imagine. What do you think? My, uh, you visitor. No, I want, I want, I want to raise my hand. Me first. I raise my hand first. But he didn't say that. The text says that he said something else. What did he say? Let's read here. What did he say? Can you, can you please show on the projection? Do you want to be made well? Verse 7, he says, The sick man said to him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. And the second thing that he says is, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. So I want to call the attention to the brethren to do two, two things. Firstly, he had no one. Imagine a man in this situation without anybody. One day I was in a church in Vitória, in Brazil. There are always brethren from there. I had left the prophetic service. The, I was getting ready to go to the pulpit, I, and I didn't know what to preach. And when I was on the back of the church, two women passed by me. And when she passed, the Lord gave me a revelation. This sentence was told, told me. She is telling to herself, I don't have anyone. I didn't know what to preach. So then I know. I know what to preach. I'm going to preach this message. And in fact, we preached. And the service, I was seeking what this woman was to see the Lord. You need to have mercy on me. What, how about now? And during the entire message, she was crying. And I'm going to say this once again. <laughs> I have no one. You have no one. And she cried a lot. And at the end of the service, we went to give assistance. And she said, Pastor, I entered here pleading in my heart, Lord, I have no one. You see, what a wonderful thing is, is a spiritual gift. A spiritual gift doesn't need exaggeration, doesn't need excesses. A spiritual gift comes softly. It comes to hit the heart of man. And what do we want to say with this? Or I'm not bringing attention to me, or, but the objective is salvation of, of the person. I want to say the following. Not only that woman, but many are like this without anybody. Surrounded by a great crowd, but they, they don't have anyone because they are all seeking their own interests. Each one wants to go first into the pool. Each one wants a blessing. They want blessing for themselves. They want to go first to the college. They want the first place at, at their job, the promotion there the, in your department. You're the one who wants to get it. But man is always facing these trials. There's always someone arriving first. That's the second thing that the, the lame said. There's always someone coming before me. And man without God, man without woman, he doesn't have a result in his life because there is always someone arriving first and he is alone. So when we speak about solitude, my brethren, it's interesting because these people in great in large cities, they live lonely because the family abandoned them. But it's not always like this. In large cities, we see, we observe this. But in Brazil, even more. I was born, I was 
I was raised in a large city, Sao Paulo. Today, you walk there, you, you trip on people, sometimes even youth. They are addicted, that their family, they try to rescue them, but they prefer to be there on the sidewalks. They build a, a, a tent there to escape from the wind and the rain. They put like a piece of paper on the floor and there they stay. And I've seen many times families trying to take people from there, taking them to a home or to take a, 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 a clinic to recover from the addiction, but they want to live alone. They want to do what they, they desire. My, my Lord, in this 21st century, man is a solitary man. The world seeks uh, their own interest. They don't want to be give themselves on the hands of the Lord. But tonight, I want to make an invitation from now. Allow the Lord to bring you to a new family. Allow the Lord to remove you from your solitude. You're not going to say anymore, I have no one. You'll be able to say, I have no family. I have a people that love me. I have a Lord that saved me. I have a Lord that delivered me. And that crowd, that man, my brother, that had no one, all of a sudden, the Lord, he was not even word to speak with him. Anything else. He just, the Lord just said, rise, take up your bed and walk. What a wonderful word, uh, phrase. My brother, my sister, get up. Today, tonight is, is the night in which you're going to get out of the situation of spiritual blindness, the immobility. Somebody has to carry you around and take you a place to receive a blessing. No, tonight the Lord is here. And He's going to say, hey, who is going to stir the water? And I ask you, why stirring the water? Why stirring the water? If the source of living water comes to you and tell you, get up, tonight is the night in which you're going to get up. What a glorious thing. So, my brother, we begin to think what a blessed thing when the Lord, how the Lord takes care of us. He's the good shepherd. He could have, Jesus could have gone to the feast. And somebody may say, God has so many things to be worried about. He will be worried about me a person, a useless person. We are like that. We are a useless servant. But he's the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life to this sheep. The good shepherd takes care of the sheep. So tonight, Jesus entered in Jerusalem. Jesus entered in this place. And there is a feast that is going to happen. Is there actually happening right now? But he's going to first to a place that nobody would want to go. A place filled with sick people, lame, blind, paralyzed. But he's going to rescue one man, a single person. If tonight one person is saved here, there's going, a, there's going to have a great feast in heaven. And we want this to happen. Actually, throughout the day, we have prayed for this. Since the morning, we have been praying for salvation tonight. And Jesus was very happy. He could have gone there and saved a great crowd. He could have saved a great crowd. But no, he went there to just to rescue one person. And I want you to know that you are very important for God. You may be thinking, oh, no, my family is serving the Lord. Oh, my, my wife, my children, leave me alone. I, I don't want to be bothered. Remember, brethren, the Lord entered here to this place to give you peace. Here is Jerusalem. Here is the place in which first there will be a cure. And then he will place you in, in the feast. But And after this man was healed, he didn't even remember who Jesus was. It's fun that he didn't go to his home. I think that all of us would have gone back to home and tell our relatives, hey, but he had no one. He went to the feast, my brethren. When man has an experience with God, he has an experience of salvation, he goes to the feast, he goes to the temple. This man went to the temple to glorify the Lord. 
And when he arrived there, everybody was asking one another, hey, who, cure, who cured you? And he said, I don't remember. I didn't even see it. I know that I was cured. But who was it? He cured you on the Sabbath. And they began to argue amongst themselves about religion. And I want to tell you here, when you leave this place tonight, somebody may approach approach you with some ideology, some religious ideology, and you reproach this in the name of Jesus. They spoke about the Sabbath because Jesus is not supposed to cure on the Sabbath. But you know what is what it is that you are receiving tonight is rest. Jesus said, "Come to me, and you find rest to your soul." Jesus is your is our rest. He went to the temple, and there they met in the temple, and Jesus gave more instruction to him. And that's what are going to happen to us uh, when we are saved by the grace of God. We were like this, lame, paralyzed, blind, walking one uh, all the place. But the Lord reached us and gave an order, get up. And we got up, cured from the greatest problem that man can have, which is man's sin. The Bible says the following. The word of the faith that we preach is this. If in your heart believe that God resurrected Jesus from amongst the dead and with your mouth you confess that He is the Lord, you will be saved. So tonight, Jesus is entering here. He is present here from the beginning. This weekend was a great blessing. We had a meeting, youth meeting yesterday. We had Sunday school early, and tonight we are happy with the brethren. Jesus is present, and He wants to save. He wants to put you on your feet. He wants to give a new life, and you can say, Lord, I want this blessing. And you say, if with your mouth you confess Jesus as the Lord, and if in your heart you believe that God resurrected Him from amongst the dead, you, you will be saved. You want this in your, in your life tonight? You want to accept Jesus as your Savior? You want to leave the pool where somebody's going to have an angel needs to stir the water. Today, Jesus, the source of living water, is present here. Let us stand up and praise and sing a song. Hello, dear Lord. Yeah. 
Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The church may sit down. I want to uh, share with the church about two spiritual gifts and then we're going to sing Your Name is Jesus very softly. The Lord has shown my brethren a man that has visited many churches and recently has gone through a period of trial great with his son who is sick and he is unemployed and desired the Lord tonight is that there is a definition in his heart with Jesus you need to give your heart to Jesus the Lord has already made signs in his life has shown his power but still his heart is hardened but tonight the Lord wants to give another opportunity for him to make a definition in the presence of the Lord the Lord has also shown a, a man that who entered here carrying a, a very heavy load a spiritual load has that has prevented him from walking in the presence of the Lord and he is being his word about the things of this life he's been involved with the matters of this world and he always have has an excuse oh no I'm resolving I go from a place to another I'm a foreigner but the Lord is telling him that tonight to um, let go of this load because the Lord has ropes of salvation the Lord wants to save this man a new clothing we have a light uh, clothing Jesus said my yoke is light and we're going to sing this song and while we are singing I'm going to ask, make an appeal to you you don't need to come here to the front we don't have this habit in my, our church but you, you give your life to Jesus wherever you are make a prayer don't worry about your neighbor or whoever is beside you think about yourself Tonight is an opportunity for Jesus to put you on your feet and you can begin a new life now. The church is going to sing. Close your eyes. Think about your life and give your life to Jesus right now. The, the women will sing the, and the man will glorify the Lord. Save lives, the Lord. Now everyone singing. Oh Lord, we pray in favor of these souls that are needy, that need a blessing of cure, a spiritual cure, a transformation of life, salvation that only you have to give. That's why we ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that these people may confess you and believe in their hearts that you were resurrected from the dead by the Father. We believe in this, that you are alive. We are, you are here, walking amongst us. Operate on those hearts, and your name is say, the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God, our eternal Father, and the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit be upon you now and until the coming of the Lord, glorious coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. My brethren, this service is over. I don't know if Pastor Renu Renuda has uh, a message about early dawn service. Uh, and also there's an instruction to pray in favor of the anniversary of the church of 50 years. So the Brandon, they are connected with us. You have this. So the text, let us read it together. So the word is with you in your mouth, in your heart. This is the word of faith that we preach to be known. If with your mouth you confess to the Lord Jesus and with your heart believe that God resurrected from the dead, you will be saved. Since that with the heart you believe for justice and with your mouth you make confession to salvation. May God bless you. Let us go to the assistance. Don't leave without receiving a prayer and to the church of peace and glory. Thank you.